Hello everybody, it's Philly Cuts with a movie review. Today I saw The Witch. It's directed by Robert Eggert. This film won the 2015 Sundance Film Festival for Best Director for Mr. Eggers. He also wrote the film. It takes place in the 1630s, United States of America, New England. Uh, starts out with a family being banished from their community. It's never really fully explained why this occurs. Uh, it seems to have a lot to do with the sin of pride that the father couldn't reconcile his differences with the town, uh, and so he decides to go along with the banishment uh, to the outskirts of the colony, to the wilderness. And shortly after this banishment, their small newborn baby gets abducted by what we think is a witch. Now, there may be some spoilers in this review. If so, you're not into that, you may not want to watch this video. But I want to say that the whole feel of this movie was tremendous. It just felt like a deep, dark descent into despair, feelings of despair, and also a sense of foreboding. Uh, I'd have to compare it to Darren Aronofsky's Requiem for a Dream, which I know a lot of you wouldn't, wouldn't consider a horror movie. I do. Um, in the sense that there was no sense of comic relief in this movie at all. And things just went from bad to worse for these characters. Um, and it very much is a period piece as well. Um, really, the detail that was shown um, in creating the atmosphere of the film uh, the costumes, uh, even the vernacular that was used by the characters. It seemed to be kind of like an old English thee and thou kind of affair, um, which was tremendously done. The dialogue was tremendous, uh, in particular of the father, uh, Ralph Ineson. I hope I said that right. Um, he's on Game of Thrones. I don't watch that, unfortunately. Uh, his voice was just tremendous. Uh, the diction, the way he spoke. Just tremendous, tremendous, commanding, commanding. And then also of the mother, uh, I believe it was Katie Dickey who played uh, Catherine. Two great performances, but also I feel the star of this movie uh, was Anna Taylor-Joy, who is new. Uh, she played Tomlinson, who was the eldest sibling. Uh, I believe there were five, including the baby. So you had Tomlinson who was about 14 years old. You had Caleb, uh, who I would say was about 11 or 12. Uh, two twins that were probably around seven, I would say, six, seven. I'm a little bad with ga gauging ages. They were twins, boys and a boy and a girl. And then, of course, the newborn baby. So it shows quickly how quickly things unravel for this family after that baby was uh, abducted and taken from the family. But more importantly, it shows, the movie shows how hard it must have been for a family to receive this sentence of banishment from a community and to be completely isolated and all alone, having to forge in that type of wilderness. Um, the father uh, is inept in the sense that he is not a very good farmer. Um, he certainly can't hunt very well. So there's lots of guilt about that, about not being able to provide for his family. Causes a lot of tension between him and his wife. You know, his wife has wishes and desires to go not only back to the colony, but all the way back to England. Um, so lots of tension there. It explores the tension between the mother and the daughter. The daughter, um, you know, she's coming into womanhood, and she's a bit outspoken as well. Um, the two twins uh, start to accuse the eldest daughter as well of being a witch. So the family is just completely, completely torn apart by the seams of these recent events, you know, the banishment, the abduction of the child. Um, so it, it's an interesting, interesting exploration of, uh, you know, how little was known about mental health at that time, how much... People relied on superstition and maybe certain uh, maladaptive belief systems that could have caused great, great problems for the family. Um, 
you really get the sense of how much the puritanical beliefs uh, influence this family. Um, they all believe that they are sinners, that they were born of sin, that they were created of sin. And they have to live up to these ideals that just aren't very, very realistic. Um, just not. And to have to go through that alone with no sense of community, no sense of support, um, is it any wonder that this family uh, self-destructed uh, the way they did? Um, so that's where I found was the true horror of the movie, you know, was really seeing how all these events slowly ripped this family apart at the seams. Um, also, there's a great exploration of, you know, coming of age, both for uh, Caleb, the oldest brother, and uh, Tomlinson, the oldest uh, sister. Um, there's kind of an interesting dynamic that occurs between them, and it's you know purely rooted in that they don't have anywhere to go. They don't have any sense of community. They don't have a school that they go to where they can interact with other people their age. Also, the twins start to form kind of an unhealthy attachment or obsession, if you will, with the family uh, goat known as Black Phillip. And I believe Black Phillip actually even has his own Twitter account right now at this moment. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And, of course, goats and, you know, sat Satanism and, I don't know, maybe witchcraft. I'm not sure. Certain sects of witchcraft kind of, you know, have uh, implications for one another. The symbolism of that, you know, like a black goat. Uh, just creates a real, real sense of foreboding. Um even the way the film was shot and the cinematography, uh, it just seemed everything was carefully planned and blocked. Uh, the pacing of the film, I felt, was excellent. Um, it did kind of lull a little bit, I don't know, maybe in the first third of the film. Like, it kind of started out like gangbusters, and then it kind of tapered off quite a bit. But it kind of showed the, the hardness and the harshness of that kind of life at that time. So very, very unique exploration of uh, human suffering, I believe. Um, and it's worth definitely worth taking a look. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But if you really like a slow-burning horror movie uh, that makes you really think, that makes you kind of question certain belief systems, um, and how that may even relate to today, you know, how quick we are as a society to judge others who may be different from us, you know, the pressure to have to conform in society, the pressure to have to believe certain things in society. And I think that the big loser in this whole movie was really the daughter, uh, Tomlinson, because um, she was kind of an outspoken uh, young girl developing into a woman. You know, and at this time, with all the superstition about witches, that's what they would do. You know, society would do at this time to an outspoken woman. You were branded a witch, and then you were dealt with accordingly. Just look at the uh, history of the Salem witch trials. Now, I know that this happened, uh, what, about 50 or 60 years prior, but that was what was done to women who were outspoken at that time. So, Scary, scary, horrifying belief systems at work in this film, you know, exposed and looked at. And I just thought it was a, a, amazingly entertaining. Um, and it stuck with me and it kept me in this feeling of, like I said, foreboding and a sense of dread. Um, so if, if you're into that, man, if you're into that feeling, uh, you won't be let down. And I highly recommend this film. I'll give it probably about four out of five stars. Eh, maybe even four and a half. I, the one thing, the one uh, thing that I didn't really like about the movie was the ending. I felt it was a bit of a cop out. I'm not going to reveal anything, but if you did see the movie, I thought it would have been much more effective if the movie ended about mm, two or three minutes earlier. I think that that could have really been sort of horrifying you know that part well i'm not gonna say i don't want to spoil it all right guys 
That's Philly Cuts. Check this movie out, all right? Peace. Bye.